So we're on episode 5, we talk Afrotainment. This episode is by far the calmest one. It starts with Prince Bolo. He's wearing a yellow tee and a matching cap, and he mentions how he's the resident producer at Afro. Dira talks on how he signed his first artist, who was DJ Sindo. Then he signed Big Nas, as well as Juicy, who was with a group called Afro Soul. Dira started his label in 2005, so he's been in the game. He talks on how he made Call Out with Nuck Music to really kick off Nuck's commercial music presence in South African music. The talkie moves to Tipsy and how she used to be a backing vocalist. They talk her work ethic and how she was always focused on the music game. Something DJ Tira has too, focus. Apparently, he's a strict guy that's always looking to get work done. He plays hard and he works hard. I mean, look at these artists. Like Sub Duncan joined Afro in 2015 at a time where Afro was only doing house music. People criticized Duncan for the move though, saying Tira would change the Duncan brand. But for Duncan, he'd still be himself, crossing genres and making his brand bigger. So for Duncan, the move was easy. An easy decision for him. Beast comes on to talk about Tira too, and it's all praises for him. It looks like Tira is done right by all his people. Beast comes on to talk about Tira too, and it's all praises for Tira. It looks like all these artists all agree that he's changed their lives through the exposure and how he backs up every artist he puts on his roster. So far, the episode has zero drama. It looks like Tira has done right by all his artists in this episode. They all speak highly of him. It's good to see. If it's not broken, why would you want to fix anything? There's a common line here you hear in this episode purely because the label is one of the longest lasting labels in SA, consistently delivering hits. You could all never doubt that. Think about hits like Maluma by Tipsy and how Mampinja and Big Nas changed the game with West Inc. in a label that went on to sign another big star, Babes Wutum. An artist that changed the game and opened up opportunities for many females in the South African music industry today. All this wouldn't be possible without the platform that Tira created. Mampinja at some point went on to Kakasi and shocked the nation when he painted Tira as the guy behind the decline of Big Nas. At the time, according to Tira, Mampincha wasn't ready to work on Big Nas. His mind, body and creative side were on lifting West Inc. to a greater level and it seems he felt he couldn't do both at the same time. Lala got signed to Afro and people started talking about how he only signed him to replace Mampincha, something Tira denies. Another story is how Lala got signed to Afro and people started talking about how he only signed him to replace Mampincha, something Tira denies. This is obviously after the feud at Kagasi FM. Tira then moves to a very serious topic, the issues with Mampincha and Babes Watu. Tira then talks on how he mediated to de-escalate the situation between Mampincha and Babes Watu. He says the entire thing had him in a chokehold. People blamed him for the situation even though he had nothing to do with it. The charges were vast and wide, including abuse allegations towards Babes Watu by Mampincha. It was a tough time for Tira, Mampincha and Babes Watu. Tira was in a tough place, trying to defend his people. The Ducky then moves to Casper's issue and how he made one of the biggest shows fill up at the same time as one of the biggest events in Durban at the time. And in one of the most wanted dates in December for events. So there was a clash. Tira felt like Casper should have called him to get involved in the event. People felt like Tira blocked Casper's event from getting sponsors. And the media made the situation even worse. The details of that feud are fuzzy on this docking. Tira didn't really want to touch on it, but you can tell he felt disrespected by Casper trying to host the same day as him, instead of moving his event to another date where they'd both be able to collaborate and make two big events in Durban involving both of them. I guess Cas wanted to do things his own way. I think he believed the event would be overshadowed by Tira if he had collaborated with them. Cas wanted to be the star of the show. He's aware Tira is bigger than him in Durban, so things could have gone south for him. Case closed. In the end, it seems Afrotainment had gone through a lot. People shading them on social media and in Durban. Nak talks on how people want to see Fat Devon Rocks fall and in the dirt, but through it all, they all pushed and made it. For me, this episode is positive, filled with artists that are still with Afrotainment. So basically, it isn't a fair conversation about the label. A good episode for Behind the Label is one that has former artists that come and speak their truth. That's my two cents. Please comment and let me know what you think of this episode. We also uploaded a short piece of this episode for those without Netflix, which will be coming very, very soon. Please check those out and the other episodes we've also put up. 
Also, please subscribe for more videos and check out our other videos too. We're finally getting some traction and people are watching my videos and it's really cool to see the growth. Thank you for everyone that's been here with us since the beginning from one subscriber to a thousand and now our road to 2K. Then we'll start doing discussions when we get there. That's your face and I will do weekly discussions and discuss some top stories weekly that we've obviously covered. And yeah, we might do it live so we can interact. Can't wait for that. All right, I'm out. Up next, episode six. It's going to be a smash as well. You don't want to miss it. We talk about rap life, Nota, Questa, the entire few. This one should be interesting because there's so much information already on the internet. So we'll be able to compile a very, very good episode for you to really have a conversation and understand the music game. Remember, the whole idea behind us documenting behind the label is for people to be able to come out and check out our videos be able to make good decisions in terms of how they want to move when it's time for them to get into the music industry all right that's all i got 